Five years ago, I created a 10-year plan for authentic business. And I want to bring it back to your attention because I do feel it tracks pretty well. And you might say, 10-year plan. Um, you know, I don't even know I have 10 years to live. No. Uh, um, so here's the problem with most business plans. They are most business plans, as you probably know, you maybe have written something yourself or, or seen friends uh, write them. They are way too fantastical, basically. Um, ah, I'm going to go from zero to $100,000 in, in the next year with no prior experience. <laughs> um, it's, you know, and it doesn't take, it doesn't, and, and it never works out, right? Like, would you rather have a 10 year plan to succeed? or have fake plans that 20 years later, you're like, well, nothing ever worked. So let me share with you the 10 year plan for authentic business success, which in my opinion is a spacious enough uh, structure that allows most of us who are heart-based solopreneurs to actually make this thing work. Now, I'm not saying it's going to take you 10 years to make your, your first uh, dollar. No, no, no. By year two, you'll be, up and running, you'll be up and running with at least a part-time income. And by year four, you'll have a full-time income. How's that? Now, you might say, George, I don't have two years to get to a part-time income. I don't have four years to get to full-time income. Okay. But if you look at how long it's taken you up to now, how many years has it taken? right? Most people don't realize, oh, okay, I have been doing this for five years and I don't even have a part-time income. Or I've been doing this for, you know, eight years and I don't even have a full-time income. I mean, this is so true for so many people that I've seen who are solopreneurs. And it's like, if they only followed a more step-by-step 10-year -step structure, they probably would have made it work faster than their, you know, uh, going here, going there with this strategy and that strategy, um, following uh, uh, very charming and persuasive uh, mentors and coaches who are leading them on paths that are not very sustainable or fulfilling or ethical or heart-based. So here's the 10-year uh, plan. Now, um, you might say that this is more of a 10-stage plan. That's probably more accurate to say it because some of you are going to take longer in the first two years of this plan and maybe shorter in the coming years. Or some of you, uh, depending on if you have you know, caretaking, um, family caretaking, or you have another job or whatever, this may take you longer than 10 years, but it's still worth doing. So, And some of you might be able to shrink this plan to a five-year plan or a four-year plan because you are, you have, you have, you very you have practiced very much integrated very much the joyful productivity methods which i find to be the foundation of of business success authentic business success is joyful productivity okay so without further ado here is the 10 year plan okay year 1 is authentic content marketing so in the first year my recommendation again if you're following this plan right from the beginning um, then my recommendation for the first year or for the first stage of your plan is to focus on creating content because you are exploring what is your voice, what are your interests really, what are the topics you love to talk about that people actually want to hear you talk about or see you write about, right? Because the, the old saying about your calling in life or your your career calling i should say is that intersection between your interests and abilities and what the world is hungry for at this time and of course that always changes your interests change and the world's the world's hunger also changes for different things so that's why the first year <clears throat> in the first stage you are getting accustomed to experimentation the first year is not about getting a great brand, clarifying your core message, understanding your niche. It's too early for that. 
It's too early for your brand. It's too early for your niche. It's too early to clarify what your, what your product and service is supposed to be. I really believe that. Not believe it because I've seen a lot of people flail around spending thousands of dollars uh, on creating a brand or a niche or a website or whatever. And they're like, okay, I've evolved. Or I never really did enough market testing to realize people don't really want to pay me for this thing. I spent $10,000 on what, right? So the first year is to enter and practice the mode of experimentation. And the best way to experiment is with content because it's free. You know, no one's going to charge you for posting on Facebook or on Instagram or on YouTube. In fact, you might make money doing it. But so the first year, be as prolific and experimental as you possibly can to try out different ideas, all the different interests that you have and start with your Facebook friends. I don't know. You have 30 Facebook friends. How many Facebook friends do you have? How many Instagram followers do you have? 20 followers, whatever. Start with your family and friends. Where else are you going to start? Really? Where else are you going to start except with your family and people who already know you, your colleagues, your classmates, et cetera? Start with them. Of course, add them on Facebook or wherever you want to do social media and then start posting there. <clears throat> and if you uh, don't mind spending a little bit of money in the first year practicing how to get your content out to more people, then learn Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Those are the two easiest and cheapest uh, ads platforms to learn to get your content out to targeted types of people, people who has share your values or share your interests <clears throat> and see which of your content uh, areas get the most interest. So that's year one is authentic content marketing, learning it, practicing it, being as experimental and prolific as possible. Year two or stage two is to now get into providing services and probably one-to-one -one services, getting you know individual clients, basically. Now, why is this year two? Well, it's because I want you, I want you, I want to get you up and running with making money as soon as possible. And the quickest way to make money is to provide one-to-one -one services. The quickest way to make money is to get one person at a time to say, yes, I will pay you $300 a month, $500 a month. Whatever it is, I will pay you to do something for me. Now, why would they pay it you? Because they've seen you for a whole year posting content, sure, on different things, but there's certain things you post that really resonate with them, right? That say, oh, wow, that was interesting, or oh, I didn't know you were good at that. And now in year two is where you approach your fans and say, hey, I am uh, really happy to, to now be taking on clients. And who wants to be one of my few clients? I mean, imagine, I just want you to imagine <clears throat> after a year of posting content prolifically, consistently, and experimenting with your authenticity, <clears throat> you now have at least 20 people who are fans of your content who would probably be willing to pay you at least $100 or $200 a month, really. I mean, right now, really, right now, a lot of you watching this already have 20 people in your life, friends, colleagues, fans, blog readers, uh, um, you know, podcast listeners, uh, newsletter subscribers, whatever you already have, like I said, friends and family starting there, who would say, you know what? Sure, I'll pay you 100 bucks a month. Sure, I'll pay you 200 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, whatever it is that they can, they, they're willing to spend with you. 20 people, go and look. You have 20 people right now who are happy to pay you $100 to $500 a month to provide some useful service to them. Now, it might be different for each person. I mean, you're, you're still exploring, right? In the beginning stages, you're still exploring what that, what that service is. But there are 20 people in your life right now who are probably willing to pay $100 to $500 a month for, 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 for you providing some service for them. So imagine if two, 20 people paying you $100 a month that's $2,000 a month, $2,000 a month, year two, like I said, part-time income in year two, or some of them are willing to pay upwards of $500 a month for your services. That's if 20 people were paying you 500 a month, how much is that? That's $10,000 a month. That's definitely more than part-time income for most people. Okay. So that's year two. Year three 
you can now, now that you've gotten your um, one-to-one clients, individual clients, and you've gotten experience, you've gotten experience working with them. Now in year three, it's time to experiment with having a group program. What I mean by group program is, um, well, just like it sounds, it's instead of one-to-one clients, individual clients, you're serving one person at a time. Maybe you're serving 20 people, but you're serving one person at a time. You are now serving uh, 10 people, 30 people, 50 people at a time, and they get to interact with each other too. So in other words, in year three, a group program means you become a facilitator of relationships, your facilitator of connections between your clients and such in and, and, and designing a program and designing a group interaction such that you know one to one equals three. Meaning when when we get together, the energy and the ideas and the interactions are more beneficial than if I were to work with you one person and one person and one person. So a group program is, uh, you know, there are so many different ideas. Uh, later, later this year, um, I'm going to be launching an online course about how to design and create a group program, how to launch a group program, because I've been doing that since 2010, really. So um, anyway, year three, it's time for you to create a group program. And imagine <clears throat> you have one-to-one clients now, and and now you have a group program, and essentially your group program is a nice way for your one-to-one clients to graduate and become more like maintenance mode with you. So maybe right, maybe one-to-one clients they're paying you, you know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars a month. That's not unusual. I, for some people, that's considered low cost for a one-to-one client, individual client. So let's say your one-to-one clients are paying you four hundred a month. Again, that's super reasonable these days. 400 a month, one-to-one clients. And now your group program members are paying you only 150 a month. So instead of paying you 400 a month, one-to-one, now your group members are paying you 150 a month. And you could have 30 members, 50 members, however many members. So imagine if you had, okay, I'll just be conservative. You have 20 members paying you 150 a month. That's $3,000 additional income for you. So let's say you had 10 one-on-one clients paying you 400 a month, that's $4,000. And now you have 20 members paying you 150 a month, that's 3,000. So now you're making 7,000 a month. Now year three, for some of you, it's year three. For some of you, it's stage three and it took you a few more years to get there, but still it's fine. Now, part of year three or stage three, I would recommend that you also consider publishing a book. Because by this point, you know, year one, you started creating content. Year two, you continue. And I should mention each of these years or stages kind of layers on top of each other. So, so year one, you're creating content. You start there. But year two, you continue creating content, continue honing your skills of being more and more authentic and interesting and relevant with your content and learning how to distribute it to more and more of the right people. So year two, you're continuing, and then year three, you're continuing content. And year three, now, you probably have enough content to publish a book. So you'll notice what I do is I publish a book every year based on the content that I made in the previous year. So year three, group program, and maybe also a book if you wish to play with that idea. All right, year four, or stage four, is when you now launch, create and launch online courses. You've seen me do this, of course. You've seen seen me do this many times. In the past 13 years, I have launched, I've lost count, but somewhere around 50 online courses in the past 13 years, possibly more, but I'm just going to say 50 confidently. And so here's what um, year four is like online courses. Now, why do we wait till year four to launch an online course? Because an online course, to be able to sell enough course, course, get enough students for your online course, it takes a rather large audience. Now, not a large audience. I would consider myself as having a small audience. You might say, George, you don't have a small. Yes, I do. I have only 8,000 Facebook fans. I have only 5,000 email subscribers. My email list is very high 
high open rates, almost 50%, open 50%, half open rate of 5,000, which is quite unusual. But when people look at when, when my, at least in my industry, I consider myself having a very small audience. <clears throat> but with an online course, I'm going to say you, you're going to need probably at least, I'm just going to say a thousand email subscribers is pretty, pretty safe to say, okay, you have enough people to sell enough courses to probably make it feel worthwhile to, to, to you, I would say. So year four, online courses, um, it's taking all the knowledge that you have been giving in your one-to-one -one clients, in your content, in your one-to-one -one clients, in your group program, and maybe your book, and taking a bunch of that knowledge and, and uh, organizing it into different topics so that you can publish it as online courses. Online courses meaning a series of videos, maybe there's some worksheets or workbooks or um, exercises. <clears throat> it's usually videos, a bunch of videos, maybe some audios, or, or some people who are shy with video can just uh, publish online courses just with audio, and, and probably usually some kind of exercises or worksheets or something like that. So year four online courses now allows you to scale your income truly. Because up to now, you've done one-to-one -one clients, that's income is not scalable. How You can't serve that many one-to-one -one clients at the same time, right? 20 is even too many for most of you, right? Most of you, maybe 10 or 15. That sounds reasonable. A group program, you can't really scale because your group program promises some inter interaction with you and you need to facilitate the connections such that you can't have a thousand people in a group program. I mean, maybe one day you can have enough staff, but realistically a group program, I don't know, maybe a hundred people is a good maximum, you know, something like that. Um, and then uh, with online course though, uh, now again, un unless you have staff, then you can scale that. But with online course, even as a solopreneur, you could sell a thousand people, uh, a thousand students in an online course. And it doesn't really take you much more work other than answering more questions from your students. But online courses are, are much more scalable, even for the solopreneur. So that's year four or stage four. Year five or stage five is now focusing. Now you have online courses, which are products that could be sold to many more people. Year five is now you're scaling the sales of your online courses using ads and automation. Ads, you, hopefully you started learning ads in year one with some Facebook, Instagram ads. Now you can make that even more effective. You can add in some LinkedIn ads. You can add in maybe Google ads, YouTube ads, et cetera, to scale the sales of your online courses in year five and add in some automation like with Zapier and with other AI tools you're automating. When people buy your online courses, they get certain um, emails and uh, there's certain ways for them to engage with one another in a fairly automated way kind of thing, or you're automating it so you don't have to be facilitating every connection with among your students, right? So year five, uh, scaling with ads and automation. And then year six, now that you have gotten a bunch of students for your online courses, okay, and you've, you've run your group program now for several years, year six is where you focus on training mentees. Mentees are people who are learning your method your knowledge framework, your exercises, learning from you how to facilitate the kind of transformation that your products and services create for customers and students and, and clients. So year six, you're training mentees because at this point, you've gotten enough you know, group program members, online students, where you can't take everybody as individual clients anymore. Maybe it's been a, you know, it's been a while. Now you need to refer people who want to work with you to others who are learning your methods. And I'm grateful to say that I have been training mentees since at least 2018, 2017, 2018 is when I started referring clients to, to my mentees. So year six, training mentees. Year seven is when you start focusing on hiring your assistant or assistants because uh, now because, okay, I should say mentees, they usually come out of your group program or your one-to-one -one clients, your mentees naturally, because they, they were clients first and they become mentees. Year seven is where you're training assistants and your assistants might be even be some of your mentees. Some of your mentees are great as assistants because they know your stuff super well. 
they are a fan of your knowledge and your framework and your presence and your business. So um, year seven, you're training them to start taking over some of the systems in your business, uh, hiring your assistants. And that's really where I find myself. So I'm actually taking longer than 10 years for the plan because I've been, I've been on year six training mentees for several years, actually. So I'm like taking my sweet time here. Year seven, hiring assistants. I really have been doing that now for a couple of years as well. So I'm like year six and year seven are kind of melding for me, but um, it, it really has been that flow. I get mentees first. And then for my mentees, I, well, first I get group program members and then mentees and then, and then assistants. And now I've, I've got several part-time assistants, very part-time assistants who are working on different areas of my business. And then year eight is larger joint ventures. Now, why is this? So year eight, what I mean by larger joint ventures is now that you have assistants who are running different parts of your business, you can scale with partnering with larger organizations and businesses, larger meaning businesses that are at least as large as yours, if not larger, to bring your courses and your knowledge to their audiences. Now, you might already have been doing some collaborations early on, but now in year eight is where you really start to scale the size of your, of your product sales, your course sales, if you wish to do so. Now, I've already been doing some larger joint ventures for a couple of years now. I would say for at least five years, I'm doing them. I, really, for seven to eight years, I've been, I've been dabbling a little bit. But I never had quite the right systems in place until this year to now, if I want, if some or larger organization came to me and says, hey, we want to sell a thousand of your courses. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I've got this. I've got the automation. I've got my, some of my assistants helping me with various things. I'm ready to sell 500, a thousand courses if some organization came to me with that. So that's year eight, larger joint ventures. <clears throat> year nine is systems documentation. Now you're getting ready for the, the finality of the program, the finality of the 10-year plan, which is semi-retirement, but we'll get there. So year nine, you're kind of getting ready for semi-retirement. doesn't mean you have to be, you know, uh, all out of energy at this point, old and ready to die. Now, I'm not talking about that. But semi-retirement, you, you could still be your, your young self, whether you're 30 or 80, your young self, and you get to spend more time doing personal hobbies and uh, less time on your business. So year nine is systems documentation. And what this means is you are now working with your assistants to document what they are doing to run your business. You know, and you're documenting all your automation, making sure that things are really, really clear so that you can, if, because assistants always, you know, I, I I've had assistants more or less for 10 years off and on and assistants always leave, you know, they always leave for one reason or another, you'll, you'll probably notice. And it's because, well, you know, life changes for people and maybe they decide to build their own business or they get another job or whatever it is, or they get tired of your business. <laughs> they want to try something different. Assistants just assume that your assistants are going to leave. Don't assume your assistant is going to stay with you forever. If, if you do have one, that's amazing. And that you enjoy working with them. They enjoy working with you. Great. But in a way, it's kind of a good idea to rotate assistants every couple of years, at least, because to bring new perspectives into your business is a healthy thing. But you need to have systems documented. So your, your existing assistants, now that they've been working with you for a year or, or so, they really should focus on, okay, now that they've smoothed out the things they're doing for you regularly, have them write down and record tutorials for future assistants. You know, hopefully write written instructions as much as possible, to, uh, little video tutorials as needed to say, all right, this is how, uh, how to run this business, your business, basically. And so now that you've got your systems documented, now when your assistants leave inevitably and you bring new people in, Training is easy because now they've got the systems all written down, documented. The video tutorials are all there. And so you can kind of, people can come in and out of your business as needed to help you continue running your business. And then finally, year 10. This is the culmination of the 10 year plan. What I call year 10 is Kaizen forever. And what this means is, well, Kaizen, if you haven't heard the term, 
is uh, it's a, originally a Japanese term, but it's really used now by you know, everyone it seems like Kaizen uh, or lots of people uh, in, in the um, systems improvement field and habits field use the word Kaizen. Kaizen means uh, small continuous improvement, basically. Uh, there's a Wikipedia article on Kaizen. If you want to look it up, K-A-I-Z-E-N. I love the word. And it's, again, it means small, continuous improvement. So year 10 is Kaizen forever. So you're always going to just be making little improvements to your business, to your systems, to how you manage and lead your assistants and your audience community and your clients and your students and your customers to small, continuous improvements. And in year 10, because you've already have your systems documented, you've got your assistants you know, in place and they're following the, the systems and continuing to improve upon them, you basically need just need to step into your business much less often just to, you know, when you need to show up to present things, when you need to um, you know, show up to create another system or to, you know, to, to train your assistants or whatever it needs. Kaizen forever means you just get to, you have a lot more time now to spend on your personal hobbies and your interests. And uh, your business is pretty much running itself ex with the exception of your, your presence as needed uh, to, to add the most value possible. So I hope this is inspiring for you for what is possible. Again, this 10-year plan, honestly, some of you watching this are probably like, I wish I had this 10-year plan. 15 years ago when I started creating a business and 15 years later, I'm still on a part-time income. You know, it's like so many people, they follow this business guru, that marketing coach, and they just kind of go here, go there. They create these systems that don't really feel authentic to them, don't feel um, aligned with their values and with their way of doing things. And so their, their business, and I'm sorry if that's been your, been your story, because I, I know, because I have had some of this in my business too. I've worked with many clients like this. Business have been fits and starts you know, over the years. And so I'm hoping that with this 10-year plan, it's, it's realistic, it's spacious enough where if you put your diligence behind it, you really can make this kind of thing work. So I hope this is helpful. And um, I look forward to, to seeing if you have any, if you're feeling inspired by this uh, or if you have any quick questions, you can comment below. Thanks so much.